Hello everybody and welcome to episode 2. This is the Creature Caster Lady of Anguish. What we've got here is the main body and the base. This is what we were working on in episode 1. And there's some more stuff that we were working on. The wing featured really prominently and you can see we've got our butterfly references in the corners that we used. One of the things we're going to do so we have to transfer the design onto this side so that we've got a mirror look here. So I've already matched it on this side and this side. Still have to do some final things to this, but it almost has to be attached to the figure at a certain point so we can see just how we want to finish that off. This is something we're going to tackle. And we also have the weapons here, right? So here's one just about finished. There's still some stuff to do on the hands. But you can see we've got to get this other one up to speed alongside that weapon. And then, of course, we've got the head. That's mostly finished. And I think I decided I'd, I think I want to have some kind of iris is in the head there. So we'll do that. Probably either a teal or a purple, something like that. I think something like along those lines would be good. At the basing, the water effects. That I don't know if that'll happen at the end of this episode. It might have to be a separate sort of bonus episode where we paint the base here, because there's still things we want to do on the figure. We want to add some more shadows in here, and then start to work on some more lights. And we're using the same brushes we did in episode one. These are the number eight round craft brushes. Obviously when they are new and a little more pristine. So you get the nifty, nifty point that you can work with. But then when they've been worn down just a bit, you get this filbert brush. Usually a filbert brush, the bristles are only about this long, so it don't have a lot of paint. Tends to just sort of splay out. Paint gets jammed down here in the ferrule. So these have essentially replaced, replaced all of my filbert brushes. And you can see it is not an expensive set. There's 12 of them here. You can get them either at Hobby Lobby in the stores. You can also get them online. There's other brands too. You don't specifically have to get that one. It's more that it's just a synthetic basically a synthetic watercolor number eight round craft brush you can see again the difference that these two offer now we're working on this creature caster figure with it's it's called monument basically you've uh, see monumenthobbies.com but you can get those at the creature caster website also slow fuse gaming speaking of creature caster let's take you here over to the website and here's our lady of anguish so you can see that what we're trying to do is get a little more colorful wings in there the head obviously is going to be a little more colorful see the, the intestines are going to be pretty similar to that i think you can tell by what we've done reasonably similar obviously we've got a little more color on our mushrooms and such and this also has some options so you can see there's some different weapon options here see there's the other ones over there and you can go with wings without wings there's a couple of different heads and that's similar to all creature caster figures there's always options for you and you can see the things fit together pretty well now let's see if this also has the paint line here i believe it does so this is again the pro pro acryl line i think there's 36 colors right now i've got a few other videos that show you these in action on other types of figures so again you can get them here they're going to be adding more to this i think between four and six every quarter they want to add there are also metallics too just so you know so what we're going to do i think first is tackle 
this wing here. So we have that mirror image, and then we can start to see oh, what's that going to look like on our miniature. So you can see what a big difference that makes already, and I can see just by putting that there, see that's why we've got our teal green color there. Well, we want some in here too, I think. So we're going to get some colors out on the palette, and we're going to tackle the rest of our wings. We've got the paint on the palette, and now it's time to mirror our wings. So again, we've got, you can see the little eye pattern down here in the same spot. So this is going to be the right wing. This is going to be the left wing. Just have to finish off the side. See, we got the teal here mixed in, sort of mixed into the brown. That made it sort of a muddy green. And we've got the browns and the blacks. Orange leads out to that tan color there. Let's get into this. We've got some paint out on the palette. We've got that dark umber, light umber. I think that is the yellow ochre. I think it's called golden brown. We've got the jade. This is the dark gray blue. That's the sky blue. Orange and an ivory over here. Let's get this show on the road. And again, we're going to start over here. And one of the things about these paints, as we've talked about before, is that they they could be used in a reasonable watercolor style. So what we just done is taking some of the blue gray, mix that in. So see, we're setting this up here for some of the jade over the top. Sometimes that's so what you have to do is, again, set one layer up with the previous layer. You, you say we're going to do this in the next layer. We need to set it up first. So now we need to do this part of the pattern over here. So I can just go with the side of the brush. That's what I really like about these craft brushes. You can just do so much more with them. We're going to get a little dark over here, and then we know we have to get some out. So we're just going to mark that out and now take the jade and some of our blue gray and so we're just going to let these mix together. As when I worked on uh, 2D painting with this paint I found that it in some ways it acts a lot like a watercolor paint. So I was doing a lot of watercolor things and we're doing something a little bit like that right now. We're letting this paint mix together. See, we're just not trying to control every last thing that it does. I gotta get all the way around here. And then, from what I've seen, it goes over the top of that. Right there, see, we're gonna let this again mix together, let it do its own thing. See, we can even go with some straight up jade there. Like so. And I believe that gets us fairly set up with our little glaze of jade. So now we taking a little bit of the light umber and I'm gonna mix that in. I'll flip this over here and I just want to make sure what is it that I've got on the other side. I don't want to lose that. Just have to there. Just had to get back my little little gap there in the wing. Looks like that's all covered. That's set to go. And we're gonna do some a little bit of dark up here too. And as that sets, see we can take a little bit of that our other blue and just start to incorporate that and see how it just is mixing mixing together on its own. You get a nice 
nice intense color here but you can overwork this in a hurry it doesn't take much for all of a sudden things to go from a nifty happy accident thing to tragedy and always the enemy of good well, tends to be better so sometimes you do something you say oh that's really neat and you have to kind of stop yourself from hammering away at it that's what we're going to do we're going to move on and try and get some of that teal out of the brush and now we've got some of our orange color that needs to go in this area over here so straight up in here you can see we're just we're using the side of the brush just really scumbling that in and we'll make it more intensely yellow with subsequent layers right now main goal is just covering the surface that's all we're trying to do here you can even water down the paint just a touch make it flow a little better there's some of this and I think at one point I did even add a little touch of red into this to give it more of an make it that much more orange more intensity and here we are now we've got the light tan mix it with the number and see this is the nifty thing see if I work got this held on its side just gonna let that blend itself because that's what you do when you have a paint like this and we've already mentioned it I think several times in part one it's gonna stay wet for a while see look at how wet that still is here and it's that much colder here now so if anything the air is even drier all right I'm going to take a little bit of our umber here. This is the dark umber. And it looks like this. It needs to almost go about that far. Yeah. So, see, we can go back and forth. We're going to go restore a little bit of that dark right there. We need some down here. There we go. Not worried about all of the intricate shading or whatever at this point. We just, again, we want to figure out exactly where all our different parts are going to go in this pattern. So you can see we're working on the white part of it here that we've gotten in some of the other wings. Well, all of the other wings for that matter. And that's got to go right to about here. Yeah, so I'm looking at the other wing. And see, we, again, we can let this, so if I take some of that away, I can just let that blend itself together. It's, to me, it's a massive advantage of this paint that I can do stuff like that. It's, I don't want to say it's quite like oils, but in some ways, it lets you do some of the things. Again, look at what we did here. That's just some real easy shading going on. Didn't have to be really difficult. So let's get a touch of the white here. And again, when this was primed, it was primed with the Badger Steino Res. It goes really well onto this resin, no problems whatsoever, so that's always good. And I think we've got our the basic gist of our pattern 
in place and it doesn't have to mirror it exactly it's we're just trying to get reasonably close so again I'm gonna go back into some orange here then we've got these two dots that we're gonna work on here we have to figure out exactly where they're gonna go I think one starts right about here but you can see how wet the paint is it's still nice and wet there there's our second one again we're gonna be going over these again I just need to see where are they supposed to be and we'll stick with that there's a touch of orange that I know is gonna go here we're just gonna mark that just like we did on the teal parts of the wings gonna go in here start to find a few lights but like I said I'm gonna add some red on here and it'll make the orange a little bit more intense sometimes that's what you got to do it you know you can try and buy every jar of paint that exists and that's great but well those sets of 400 paints they get expensive to say the least or 200 paints or whatever it is if you could just do a little mixing I know it's not it's can be kind of a scary thing to think about it first but being able to do a little bit of mixing you don't have to mix it every single time just having that ability in your back pocket be surprised at well, how much money you can save on paint but also how how much less you gotta haul around you know I, I have to paint on the road all the time at different conventions and everything and for at game stores whatever so it's not always easy hauling that stuff around there we are just working through this down here and just want to see what I've got here on the edge of the wing and something like that that more of that might happen off camera than on because it'd be hard for you to see and well there's so many other more important things like working on the face working on the weapons like we'll do in our next segment that'll be a fun little thing to tackle so as that starts to dry a little bit see I can get in here oh look now the orange starts to cover that and now we're gonna move away from the orange and go back to go back to some teal here but yeah look at how that all just kind of melded together there that's really nice and the brush that I'm using here this is the the worn out one that's more of a filbert style so that can tell you just how resilient these are and I generally just clean them with rubbing alcohol I don't use the brush soaps or anything like that I I think in the past they used to try and use those and all too often I ended up with soapy paint just for whatever reason the soap never seemed to want to leave the brush and I just said the heck with it we found what nifty stuff the rubbing alcohol we do could do and we said all right well we've got ourselves our cleaner we didn't even get super glue out of the brush it is not something that brush soap can do pretty sure of that so we're just adding in some not just adding in in the highlights but we're also starting to work in a little extra texture here 
we're following there's these sort of striations in the wings and we're just going to follow those now it is important to get enough interest to, if I can use that word especially on these outer parts of the wings because they're just going to be more visible and the inner parts maybe you don't invest quite so much time because people may not be able to see absolutely everything that's going on that's why I started to attach more figures to their bases to paint them whereas they used to always be almost always on a pin well in the early days of pin vice then I started to put them on just paper clips use dowel rods just like the the weapons you know, that you'll see me painting and the face that's how I used to mount every single miniature and and I started to realize just how much time I was painting stuff that just couldn't be seen unless you A, use the flashlight, and B, turn the miniature upside down. What am I doing here? We are, we added a little bit of the yellow ochre. I think it's golden yellow is what it's actually called. What's the idea? The idea is to have some parts of this it's like here see how there's uh, some yellow in there so now we're starting to add in more of a yellowish tone to this I don't want to lose the blue slash teal tone completely so I have to be judicious I don't want to just keep going everywhere everywhere and cover up all of my nifty all my work there Another thing to consider if this is potentially in shadow, I don't necessarily want to get the light colors as light. Yeah, maybe not quite as light as that. Because most likely that part of the wing, or that side of the wing, is going to be catching more of that light. So here we'll. See, we can lighten this up a touch more. I'm going to go more with a little sky blue. And then we just get down in here. Yeah, so I, I try not to have these be more than two and a half hours long. And I think stuff like the water effects and other things that I wanted to throw in there for you. I'd really prefer the, the foliage and everything, but the I've got some homemade grass tufts that I can use now and flower tufts I didn't have before. I'm going to give that a little more than just a cursory view. So it's probably why this will be 3 episodes long gives me a little more time to show you the wings here as well so again try not to lose all of the cooler blue colors that we've been working on with in here and you see I start to notice all of the different little there's so many different layers of shapes in here that I just didn't notice before. So what I'm going to do now is move on. Because again, we're always trying to keep the ball rolling here. Now we've got a little bit of the black mixed with the dark umber. And we're not just darkening this. See, we're starting to add some of that texture. See, my brush strokes, they're all following this line and this also must be a bit darker here and so it's it's the part that looks like an eye I think what I decided to do is give it even a little more of the look of an eye 
See, we'll hit a few spots here, and now we've got to get up here. Let's grab some of that umber again. And this also needs its hint of an outline. We're darkening this up here. We're going to also darken this line here, all the while trying to carry a little bit of texture in that. There we go. Now we've we're going to darken this down. We see we still got some of that original darker teal mixture there. We're going to get some in here. Some of that here. That's why I like to have these colors out on the palette like this. And I think as I've mentioned in the early part of this, I don't use wet palettes. You can see I do pretty much a lot of watercolor stuff already. So I'm used to I must kind of make the palette a wet palette by default. Gets kind of messy, gets kind of wet. So there you go. But it's just interesting how this can work almost as a watercolor, but then sort of works as an oil paint. Now, I also need to get some lights right here. So again, that's the ivory mixed with a touch of the golden yellow. And we're going to work, work in here a bit. And out here, need some all the while keeping aware of this same texture pattern same flow of the brush stroke always working this way and same thing here and now that I'm holding this in a different spot, I'm just going to can see how I was holding it there the last episode. That's enough for right now. Again, we'll do more with that later. But you see how I can almost mix like oil paint right there? That's just a really neat option to have. Now I talked about adding some red. Let's find, I think this is the bright red, yeah. So we'll throw some of this out here next to, next to our orange. Not going to take that much. So we're going to throw some more orange out here just so we got it. Now I'm going to take my other brush here. We'll mix these together and you can see how intense. Oh good, that's there. Look at how intense that orange is. So it just deepens that, gives it a little more vigorous. It matches now that. Because see, what are we lacking? We're lacking that oomph of that orange. Yep, we're going to put some oomph in there now because we got oomph on the brush. That sounds weird. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of those. See what that does. Look at the difference. Look at the difference that makes. Once again, the brush jokes keeping in the same pattern once again. So over here, look at how that now starts to play off of all the teals that are there. 
We're starting to get multiple layers of colors here. We're going over the top of that, that darker tan. That gives it a little different look. It's not a dry brush. There's plenty of paint in there. Look at that. So it's not a dry brush whatsoever. We're just using a little more of a feathered brush stroke. And no, that's not a pun because we're painting wings. Besides, it's a butterfly, not a bird. So I'm going to just drag this along. I'm still finding out all the properties of these paints. Each time I use them, I try a little something different. I haven't tried the metallics yet. There's plenty of creature caster miniatures that I can try it on. I've got army painting stuff that I can try out the metallic. So we'll, we'll see what those do. You know, I think already, if you've seen any of the f videos, you know I really do enjoy the metal medium. And I believe we've already tried it with these paints, and it seemed to, seemed to work out well. I think that was on that was on the Tannenberg figures. Yeah, that's another that's one of the army painting series that I did. So see now that I've got this I can uh, a little touch of that golden yellow. Now that lightens it up. Looks like that's on screen for you. See now I can have a little slightly lighter version of it. See, like just a few accents right there. So here we're going to try a few here. And just work our way through some of these. See the, basically the structure of the wings. I don't want to call them struts. It's a little more of an airplane kind of thing, but I think you know what I mean. And this is, see, we start to get into the interesting, well, every every phase to me is interesting, but now see, as we start to find all of these little minute textures in here, this is where it's fun to play around with our colors. And just through a touch of tiny bit of that ivory into it and see that just lightens it up a touch and even this I mean this is as light as we're getting so you can see we haven't we haven't exhausted any kind of highlight potential whatsoever there's plenty of room to get lighter and you'll see that after I finish a few more of these and we start to work on the white area here and get that a little lighter you'll see just how much brighter we can go so just a few more of these yeah so we're getting some nice nice nifty shape on our interiors of our wings Let's get to that lighter color. Again, I'm not going to linger very long on this. Here, I'm going to get a touch of that. This is what I needed here. Because uh, what was happening is it was getting a little too yellowy. I need this to... I don't want to say it makes it more reddish, but it makes it a little more neutral. And in we go to get a few a few of our lights back here. And we're doing that on, again, it's not really an eye, but it sort of looks like it. And hey, you know, this is chaos -y stuff. And now it's already got eyeballs on it anyway. So to me, it seemed appropriate. Here, let's 
See again all this while. See these little striations we're putting in here. That's nice. Also trying to keep in mind that if this is the underside of the wings, can't quite, you can see I have not gone to the brightest white. Even this is not going to be straight up, it's not, and the tire, this uh, what, ivory is not even as light as the pure white, which I think there is, I think it's, yeah, it's the titanium white. This is the ivory. So we have not gone as light as we could go, even just with the color. So see now we've got some nice, nice stuff going on there. Let's. We have a little bit of white in the brush. I'm gonna let that mix with the jade, and we're going to do a few, few things like this. We also need one of those over here. And I'm also going to add, do a few, not as not as much, not as intensely as everywhere else, but just a few hints, and just a couple of hints where it sort of crosses over to where the black slash brown might be. And at this point, so I can I go a little bit more with the white there and just find a few of these little areas. Sit there next to my orange. Uh, whenever I see just more of a solid type thing, I want to have more of these striations. So there you have it. There's your wings. That basically completes those. Like I said, we'll do a little more either right before they're attached, once they're attached, and we can really see what we need to have happen. But next we're going to move on to the weapons. Let's have some fun with our weapons. I can see one that's we've worked on a little bit here again. Haven't done the hand very much except just to throw some purplish grays on there. You can see we've got some some yellows worked in, some highlights here. And this is just the initial kind of glazing that we did to start with. I did throw some yellow out here, a little bit of mahogany. But let's start off good we still got some red there so we got some orange and now let's, let's toss some, some of this yellow in there so as you can see we want to get some of that orange there but there's also a hint of green see it's it's not all just warm 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 there's actually like a lemon yellow in there so I'm gonna make this be where I can just see it and look at it and I'm going to start to work in some of our color. And this is not quite as much about lightening things as it is about just shifting some of the color a little bit. Because we did all of our work to get the shadows in there. So now we're going to play in the mid-tones a little bit. This is why I've got the mahogany out here because this is going to make a really nice yeah, it's going to be a nice warm dark color in there. Let's see what we got on this side. We need to do something that's a little bit similar there. Again, all the while using the using our nifty craft brushes because they do have a decent point on them. Now they're not going to keep that point forever. Obviously, something along the lines of Windsor Newton Sable. 
I have those. Of course I do. But if I do most of that grunt work, as I call it, with these expendable brushes, the really good stuff, like my Winsor Newton Series 7, it gives them basically a whole new lease on life. Uh, one thing I've learned is that even even those, those Winsor Newton Series 7s, when they start to get a little bit aged and they're a little more beat up, oil paints do really well with those. They I swear they act like conditioner. And and these do also. I actually have another creature caster video. Now these take a little bit longer. That's the one that's the potential downside of oils is that it makes things like that take longer. But I am working on a video series of another creature caster. I think it's the Lord of Ruin or something like that. It's one of the, well, essentially Nurgle-themed demons. Here we've got our yellow. We're going to work that in right here. Like so. Now I also have to determine, okay, what am I going to do with the little eyes there? Those are going to be teal, and that's... I'm going to continue that theme, I think, as, as much through this whole figure as I can. So again, I'm going to put this in. Now, do we... We want some dark, more dark here. Yeah, we're going to do that with... Grab some of the black, some of the mahogany. And we'll give a little bit of water on that. Line this up, and then we're going to get a little more water on it. And the idea is not just to accentuate that edge, but I think you can see it. It's also, in effect, creating a little bit of reflected light there, and I sort of like this darkened, almost stained, and on the sickle here, I know it took, they got hit by the brush, and I saw it, and I said, oh, I kind of like that. Here, let's accentuate a few of these. No ribs in here. And this is something you're going to see a lot on the Creature Caster miniatures. Even though there's many different artists that work on each of these, there's definitely, you do see certain things emerge uh, multiple times, and that's one of them that, see there's little sort of rib-like structures are like this. So see, we're starting to get a really nice contrast. We haven't added any of the white yet, which is good. Let's see what we have here. So you can see we can go another level in there. And speaking of the smaller ones, you know, okay, so we, we grab a brush that's smaller here. So this is just a cotton in here. Now, this one is not going to be as fine as a Series 7, but it is reasonably delicate so let's get that where you can see it so see it's a uh, Windsor Newton cotton in there and we'll bring in some more of that yellow white in here I'm gonna get some around the eyes Like so, we got the that corner of your blade there. It's I'm again hoping to get 
another camera set up for larger pieces like this because this is really pushing the limit of what can go underneath this camera. I probably would be, well, I definitely would be working on these pieces separately anyway. I think you can understand why. Like the face and all that, but once I had to put these on the miniature, it's very, there's very little opportunity for me to get it back underneath the camera here once it's all together. And that's something that I, I would rather, I wish I could show you. I can, I can maybe squeeze it under there a little bit, but nowhere near the kind of nice view I'd like you to get. So. That's why I appreciate the contributions because I try to keep enhancing the experience, try to squeeze in that much more information, try new things like all new paints, new materials, new miniatures. So I'm going to do. I'm just going to throw some light here on these eyes so that when the teal goes over that it's almost like throwing a watercolor wash on a piece of watercolor paper. So now see we're starting to get this a little more in line Whoops, with what we've got over here. Now the other one has almost a touch of greenishness to it. I'm going to get our orange there. Speaking of green, there's our teal. And now, see so we're just going to work on the handle of this sickle. And then I'm going to get some of that here. I'll put some on this side. So now what this does, instead of it being all reddish and orange, this is, again, some of the color that we used on the wings. And as we've talked about before, certainly on this one and many other videos, we're trying to make sure to have that color harmony. And you now color harmony is easy to carry when you make sure that your colors are find their way to every part of the miniature. So those isolated colors unless there's a really specific reason for it that's something that you try to avoid so again see here there's a little bit of green that works its way into that I'm gonna use some of the mahogany here and go back to create more of a transition there and now just while I've got it here Oof, and I use some yellow in there. And I'm just going to go into that. It looks like each side has three of those. So now, see, we're also here. Let me change my focus a bit so I can get closer. There. That's better. And the idea is to mirror the eyes on the wings. And then we'll try and do the same to the eyes on the face. But also now there's something a little more interesting going on with this weapon instead of it was all 
the whole thing was just that same endless reds and orange. Well, might not be as interesting. Guess what? I'm going to throw a little bit of green here on the hand. A little green on the handle. Maybe a few patches of green here. Not much, just a little bit. Maybe even here on the end. Just almost, well, maybe it's a verdigree effect. Who knows? It's chaos. See, I can even throw a few of those greens down into those shadows like so. Now let's grab our other this is the original one that I had. So this is something that I might do a little more of too, especially when it comes to these where there's two wings, two weapons, two of something what I might do is go ahead and just do one off camera because, well, you don't necessarily need me to see see me to, see, need to see me doing two of the same thing. And this way, you'll get to see more other techniques, and then you'll have a essentially a painted example to work from. So see what I'm doing here, and a little something different on this weapon. I'm going after those. I think we got the green on that side too, and the eyes. Let's do a little more here. Maybe some on the underside here. Not necessarily everywhere. And who knows, that, that green there may not survive. We may change it completely. Who knows? I'm going to take even more of the yellow here. What have we got there? So now we've got a little bit of a glow to that eye. Now I don't think I've taken the fluorescent paints and used those with the creature casters. So I'm going to be curious with the creature caster paints. I've got a, f well, I think a whole bunch of the creature caster miniatures. I want to do some, definitely want to do some object source lighting and that means fluorescent paints. So you'll definitely see that combination happen. Again, a little bit of that green there. So I'm even going to take some of this. Now there's a lot of yellow in it. See, I don't even know if that can show up there. There's just a few little dibs and drabs of it out here. So it sort of contrasts a bit with some of the orange color there. I'll get a little more down in here. And I talked about having the Windsor Newton Series 7. So we've, we've got them. There's one. Now I am going to let's get some of the let's get some of that ivory back out here. There we go. And not just lighten that up, but also maybe cool it down a touch. We have just a little bit of an opposite type of a color going on. 
All right. Do some here. And maybe even just a touch along there. Same thing there. I think that's about where you can see it. I'm going to hit this again. And I'm going to grab some of my mahogany, mix it with this. It's a whole new different color there. And add a little mid tone into this. Is this looking a little plain? I'm going to go back to my greenish color here for our handle. And the idea is still to have some, some differences between both weapons. It, it's chaos after all. Gotta keep that in mind. So we just added a few of those. I think what I also am going to do now we still got a little bit of that black there. Maybe mix it in with a little bit of the teal. So I'm basically trying to make a liner paint for myself. All right. And the idea is to... We're not necessarily outlining this. I just am trying to get some more definition right here on these basically de facto eyelids. I'm going to do this side. Here's a sneaky little one over there. Got the other one to do. You can see that I need to add a little bit of my lighter right here. So again, it's not so much an outline. Just trying to get a little more definition. Maybe this one I'll use some mahogany in there. And voila. Now I may I do like the idea of having a little bit of an iris on these things. It's going to be more the, the slit type of a thing, like a cat's eye, basically. Or potentially lizard. And let's do that. Right, just want to get that. And now, I'm trying to put it where you can see it. We're going to start up here and just drag that down. Let's see, we've got ourselves a little, sort of like a dragon eye, whatever. So I think this is what we will do to the eyes on the main figure's head. And I know what I've done with my eyes and a lot of pieces lately is actually hit him with the secret weapon water effect which gives it that little bit of glossiness that's kinda hard to match now you can try and paint that on but sometimes just having it just be glossy is Actually, a little better. So, see what we do is we sharpen up. 
can get that a little bit sharper. I say I can go back in now. Over the top of that, get more definition. On the other side, doing the same thing. Now let's get some eyes. Do the same thing on the other side. I'm just going to go straight mahogany with that black. Makes it essentially a red liner. That's what I'm trying to make. All right. So I like that green on the hand there. So I'm going to grab the figure. Actually, after I do this stuff here, I'm going to grab the figure and see if I want to extend that green on more parts of the arm. So again, thin it down. Right here, just a couple of these little tiny slits for the eyes. I'm going to go with a little mini glaze of the mahogany here. And I still got some of my green. Mixed with the mahogany and the teal and just again putting a little more on the handle. That may change. I can here I'm just gonna throw some more yellow into that. And right, so we've got that. Now let's take a look at our miniature real quick here. What do we have? Yeah, so see, these are almost more like an armor thing here. So, yeah, you know, I want to work some of that green up into there. So let's go back to our, here, I'm going to grab some of this umber if it's still around. It's still alive, sort of. I think some of our, yeah, that's a little bit alive and teal. You notice I haven't really reached for green at all. I'll grab some of that brown there. Now I do like the dark next to the weapon itself. So I'm just this is only on the essentially the raised parts of the hand here. Yeah, I do also get the sense that this is sort of, well, they're trying to give it an insectoid type appearance. So there's a lot of this segmentation. What do we got? Yeah, we're in a good spot here. Like that, and now... Let's hit the other one here. And I think there, it's more on screen for you. Let's just go right down the line here. And Gonna grab a little bit of the ivory and we'll get to the knuckles here. And it is really odd to be 
Just working on, on something in pieces like this after spending so much time on whole miniatures. But, as I say all the time, I'm always trying to push myself to do things that are different. Stuff that I don't usually do. To get out of the proverbial comfort zone. You'd be surprised. I know it's, it can be a little nerve-wracking, but... Sometimes when you do things that are a little out of the ordinary for yourself, you'd be surprised that just you that's when you usually make discoveries. So here we'll get that touch of a highlight on that. Right here. Get on those knuckles, that handle. And last but not least, we still have our some of our white here. Let's just grab a tiny bit of the yellow. And we're gonna put just a few bright highlights in a few places here. Not everywhere, just a couple. See, we're breaking that up. I'm gonna put a few down here. That's all it takes. And it doesn't take much before it gets to be too much, so... I'm gonna hit some of these upper lids. I mean, it just takes a dot sometimes to do the job. Same thing here. See this little dot right there? And then up here. Let's go right through in here. A couple of those right in this spot. See, just a couple right up there. And a few there. Let's go to the other one, make sure we've done the same thing. Looks like you can see it. So again, we're going to get a little bit of a light right there. I'm going to try and get our highlight thing working here. And you'll see on most and the other monsters too will have to do something like this where we're there's basically a almost a whole video that's on just pieces instead of the actual main thing. But what do we have now? We've got ourselves a couple of nifty weapons with eyes. Right, and we've made a little bit of a decision on maybe what to do with the hands here. And I'm actually just going to throw a, another little bit of a light color here on the knuckles. Just to get one little extra point of emphasis here.
and the Creature Caster slash Slow Fuse Gaming's colors, they really are, to me, they're designed to be mixed. That's why I basically like them as a 2D paint also. Alright, so the next thing we'll tackle is some more shading on the main body. We won't be putting quite so much of these little details on it, but we'll get into we'll get into a more advanced stage. So stay tuned for that. We're back with the main body of this figure. And we're going to do a few things. We're going to add some darks in some places. I see that I really want to start to accentuate my turquoise in some of these areas. I also have to find some areas where I can get orange in here. Cause I'm looking at the wings with all that orange. And I see absolutely no orange here. We got it on the weapons. So this is orangeless. So I think maybe in here is where we're going to try and work that. Maybe also we want to try and do some spots. Potentially... But first, I wanted to do something with darks. Now we've got a few new things here. This is sort of a purplish blue color here I'm looking for. It's this one. It is Faded Ultramarine. Then we do have a, I think this is just called Purple, and this one's called Magenta. Again, orange, yellow, purple, magenta. They try not to get too adventurous with the various names. And when I'm going to do now is I'm going to mix this dark blue gray with some of my black. And I'm just looking for a few. There we go. I need some definition in places here. Not too dissimilar from the definition we've got on some areas of the wings. So again, this is probably not going to be the easiest thing for you to see until let me get some water in here. Get some more of that blue there. This is something I've been trying to do more with the creature caster paints is see what can happen with some glazes here. So we're doing that now. See how that starts to darken that up a little bit. And then we're just going to grab a little bit of our jade. Make sure that doesn't get too bluish. See we're going to do is like this. Remember we got our sponges and then we're gonna take some of it away and if I feel like I need to go into an area with a little more control that's what these guys very handy for so that starts to darken that down in the areas where I need it to See, look at how much of that came off. So that's what I wanted to do is reinforce a few darks. Do some of that on the other. Like here, I'm probably going to want to do it around the neck and collar. Yeah, just in the depths here where there should be some heavy-duty shadow. Where there just there wasn't. It was a little too... Too light. Now, the Creature Caster paints, they act a little bit differently. Well, I don't want to say a lot differently, but they are definitely not similar to the way, say, the Reaper Liner paints work or the Secret Weapon paints. They're formulated different, so it shouldn't be, shouldn't be a massive surprise. And I'm still... Still experimenting with them. I, I try to do as many of those experiments basically just in front of the camera here so you can see them instead of me. Like I always say, I don't want to just be feeding you the same thing over and over again where it's, okay, this is something I've tried a thousand times. I know it works every single time. Now I want there to be a little more I don't know, risk involved, we'll call it that. So see, we're even going to do a little bit more here. Now I've noticed that you've really got to 
really have to take that down. Now, so you can even use do something like this. I've done it in the past where so you throw in some water there. Let's see if I've got some more of my sponges here. And I took some of that away. Yeah, I'll take a little more. Let's see, now we've got a little bit of that staining down into the crevices there. I want to get some over here. Again, you're not going to be able to see all of that. Now we're going to take some more water. I think you can see what I'm about to do right there. See that? And now it's a little bit more like what we did on those wings where you had that brown to blue transition and there just wasn't a transition, it was sort of a stopping point. It went light brown, light brown, light brown, boom, turquoise. I said, nah, that's not how the wings were. See all the neat transitions that happen in here? So I know it was a little bit messy, but it kind of had to be done. Now we're going to do a similar thing here with our collar and I know to you it already just looks super dark yeah it's going to get a little darker how does that sound until it gets lighter that should really throw you off because what we're gonna do is again take the sponge here take some of that away Am I going to have to call this a detail sponge? I don't know, maybe I will. I don't know. The detail sponge. There's a, a new magic item that can be for sale for $99.99. Speaking of dark, we're going to put some here. So I think this this might be a good place for some orange, maybe even some... Say on here, possibly. So yeah, this definitely changes things around from what I first had going on here. But now, yeah, I, I like the addition of all of this turquoise. I'm not sure if you can see it. But it definitely is. Yeah, we're going to do it here in this collar. Just turn around so you can see it. So I'm gonna do. Remember what I did on the wings? It's basically the same exact idea there. Let's get a little more water on that. You can even use your fingers to take some of this away. But yeah, now, now I feel like I have some more actual transition here instead of just a lot of solid colors that kind of ended here and there. Yeah, that's, that is better. So we're going to do the same thing up here. So we're going to introduce some turquoise into that. Oh, let's do, speaking of turquoise, what do we got here? Looks like you can still see that. So see, we can do this. I'm just going to get some down in here. And in addition to, so let's see what we're going to do, we're going to fade this out. This is more, more by using, say, some water. And then maybe what that clears out is you know, the possibility of some kind of markings, faded spots. Like what we've got here. So again, I'm just just trying some things out. See, I didn't like that. And just wipe it away. All we're doing is just trying some things out. There's no no law that says you cannot change things. We've certainly we're certainly going to keep doing that. 
So again, what I thought was really dark, all of a sudden it wasn't quite so dark. And then it's going to look dark again when I start adding lights. Here's the other thing I wanted to start to do is... Hmm, so there's some turquoise. There's some... And just trying to make kind of a darker, muddy purple. And I'm just trying to do a similar thing to some of the intestines here. They just need some more darks in places. I can always go back in and lighten things up. But remember, those were essentially just the shaded base coat that we had there. See, I'm going to throw even a little bit of that lighter purple in there. And remember how we let things mix together on the wings. In some ways we're doing something similar like that. But now on the intestines, which with creature caster figures tend to be more outside the bodies than inside the bodies. It's just... That's just how it is. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of that magenta. You're barely going to be able to see what I'm doing there, but in some places I can see actually more just primer than anything else. That's no good. See, we're just going to let all that mingle at the same time. So I'm going to grab a little touch of that lighter purple there. Yeah, I know this is relatively dark here. Let's see if I can. Yeah, there we go. That's That might help you a little bit. Just turned up the brightness. I think I had it set for when I was working on the here, let's get back to my other color here. I had it set for when I was working on the weapons, and it needed to be a touch darker because some of the bright highlights there were starting to burn things out just a touch. And again, we're going to grab a little mahogany here maybe to get some some of these internal, I don't want to say internal organs, but there's definitely some exposed insides there. Since, well, we got all of these intestines, why should we be surprised? And back here again. So that definitely, yeah makes a big difference. Now again, some of it I just couldn't see. So, being a little more judicious in how I spin this thing around and taking a little closer look in some areas. I think now I've got a lot of that pretty well set and what I'm gonna do is see if I can't find some interesting areas here to accentuate a bit with not just lighter colors but colors that are more saturated And this is something that I'm just going to have to reach the brush in here. You won't really be able to see what I'm doing. That's better. Now that's a little bit of the faded ultramarine. Purple in there. and I'm going to start to work in a few lighter colors here but I don't want all to be the same so I want that to be darker and well just kind of the way intestines work if there's 
stuff inside there. It's going to be a little darker, so maybe we just indicate it and a little more bluish. Yeah, I used to do the intestines kind of a pinkish color all the time, the same sort of pinkish color, and then I realized, no, they sometimes they need to be a little bit more of a dirty color, for lack of a better term. And I'm going to add a little more of that. I'm just trying to get this stable for me to hang on to. Now by virtue of that being darker, now these lighter colors that I add on, those tend to stand out a bit more. If they stand out too much, then I can... See, I just mixed a little bit of my previous color in. It's also still wet in some places, so I can let it almost blend itself. And remember, I can go much, much lighter than this. But I want to save that to see how light do I go with some of this, these colors right around it here. So I kind of like the dark there, because if this gets lighter, and I know that that seems maybe a little unusual that you would have a darker color in front of a lighter color to get that sort of contrast, but actually that's a pretty valid thing to do. And I'm just going to keep moving around here, and if I see an area down here, you know, maybe, I don't know if I'm going to make that green, or, you know, do I do something like this, make it more floral, and again, with the dried moss, some of it may flake away, and if it does, well, what's the big deal? it would have broken away anyways. So that's you're basically ensuring that the part you've got there is the toughest part. Again, not sure if this is showing. Eh, it shows up a little bit. It shows up just enough, I think, for you to see what we're doing. Now, I also don't want this to be a video about painting intestines. So I'll only spend so much time here before I move on to other stuff. Here, I'm going to grab some more of this. I'm going to water that down. And while I've got it, I'm just going to plop some on these on this moss here too. Because remember, this is supposed to be sort of a chaos-y type thing. We're not not looking for realism here. Well, it's weird. You want a touch of realism. I think you want just enough realism to where people accept that it exists, but enough of fan of enough of the fantastic that it keeps them keeps their interest. So, see, I've added just a touch of white in here, the tiniest bit, and it already is going to make a big difference And how much that, see, look at that, how much that stands out now. And if it's too light, well, guess what do we do? We just, we did those initial glazes, we knocked some things down, made them darker, you can always do that again. You can see now I'm starting to get a little bit of that lighter magenta color on the end of that. So see that falls off? Fine, whatever would have fallen off anyway. The paint actually does help to <coughs> sorry, seal some of that up. So there I might change that highlight actually to something that's more bluish. So I'm gonna leave that area alone. I'm gonna leave that area alone. And then I'll show you what I mean by more bluish. So here's our... There. That's got some more of that faded ultramarine. I'm going to 
this down just to, and look at that. So see that now that's got a little more of the bluish color in it. And what does that do? It gives us, you've got yellowish color here, now you've got a blue and yellow and blue, basically opposites there. But also the yellow and blue make green, so you're also now, because we've got the green there, we're going to have some bone in here. I think that's the the next thing I'll, I'll mess around with here. Again, don't want to get super involved in those, so I'm just going to start switching right now. I guess when I'm going to have some of that lavender color work its way in there. And we're going to... What I'm going to do is just mark off things that look like this should be bone and then after I'm going to add some more white to this and then I'm going to do some glazes over the top so I think you can see what we're doing here yeah now fortunately we have some white in the pattern on our wings which means that won't be super out of place. That we try to keep things definitely don't want things out of place. You, you try and make sure that that color harmony that we've been harping on the entire video here, that we maintain that as much as possible. So I'm just going to lighten this up a little bit seems like it's sort of a stretched out skin as opposed to bodice so I'm gonna make it almost more tan but I'm also gonna put a hint of magenta on that there's a bunch of little striations over here I'm gonna hit those with some of this pink too and then maybe do a green glaze over the top. Where's my, here it is. And I'm gonna go, I don't, I may switch that back to the darker green, we'll see. I'm just starting to Again, add some lights in a few areas here. And now you can see how that the green starts to stand out even more that we glaze down in those shadow areas. Touch more of that. And there's also these, essentially this looks like some ribs right here, so that's what we're going to hit right now. A couple of those. Just have that spine go up there and grab some of that ivory color. So we're, once again, we're just kind of feeling our way around this figure to see, okay, what's, what's exactly going on in some of these places? Because you can, I don't know, you can study it in advance all you want, but at a certain point, you're just going to be surprised. You're going to say, what in the world? I didn't know that was there. Studied the heck out of it. Didn't really see that there. And yet all the while, still trying to keep building all the other areas at the same time. 
So again, just thinking about marking off some of these. See how now that starts to have a little more turn to it. Because we got those, we put some deeper darks in there that also have a more interesting color. And we can, you'll see how I can just keep going lighter. I have plenty of, and I can go a lot lighter than this. But you can see as soon as I put a light there, I try to put a corresponding light somewhere else. Speaking of which, I'm going to grab a touch of orange here. I don't want to see what happens here. So I'm going to tone that down a touch. I've got some of that tan. might even throw a little purple in here. I can work around those dots, or I can just say, you know what? I can always paint those dots back in. can see I can take some of this away and if I feel I need to add some green in there again well I just did that now I'm going to more of the that bluish color there so we're starting to spread this out like a filbert brush See, so, you now we're starting to get a little mixing going on. See, so, you know, I even get a little more of my tan mixture in there. Even a little more. You can see that we start to get a more of a transition there. And if we need to go even darker, we're going to take some of the some of the brown and the blue here. That light umber. That can even glaze a little touch of that in there. Can take some of it away. Got some of the orange again. So see, I can even take my hand, almost sculpt that brush. And see how we're just feather that over the top. Bring that through here. And this is the, I don't want to call it oil painting property, but it is, in some ways it's almost like being able to oil paint. So this is something I would do with oil paints. I'm flattening out the brush like this. And then basically wet blending over the top. Oops, give me some more of that orange in there. And so we'll do it again. And it's just those broad, gentle brush strokes now here. We're not going to get that quite as light, obviously. That needs to be in shadow there. But you can see I've let the colors mix together. We're going to start to add a little light back in here. And by light, I'm talking middle tone. Because remember those 
darker glazes that I added when we first started with this. That's making these, again, this is, see how light that seems? That is basically almost a dark color that I'm putting on. It is a, it's a dark middle tone. Look how dark that is on the palette. I think you can still see that. But when it gets onto the figure, it just changes completely into something much lighter. So again, I'm hoping that you can see these things that I'm adding here. You may not be able to. This is why I need that new filming area for large scale stuff. And that's, that's one of the things that I'm hoping that I can, if I can get enough of the, the new pledges and such, it'll make it possible for me to start getting some of these new, well, heavy duty pieces of equipment because the new machine, that's going to cost a bunch. I, the new backup drives to store all the data, that's not quite as much. But still, it is, it's an outlay, and that is why I've been requesting support here. Now I talked about the turquoise. We're not going to forget about that. Here, I'm going to throw a touch of that. What do we got here? Boy, and that seems so dark on the palette, but boy, I get it on here, and that is really bright. So it's it's something I may have to tone down, but it's also then helping me to mirror some of what's going on in the wings. Now I've got to make sure I don't want to say I got to gray it down it's not we're not making gray but I just added a touch of my umber color there and it makes it just a little less intense a little less pure if you remember we did that on the wings also I guess, too, the other thing I have to consider is that, you know, yeah, this looks really light to what I'm adding on here. But that, that game of chess that you're playing against yourself, well, I don't know if it's you against yourself or you against the miniature, but there's a game of chess going on. Because let's say we throw a little bit of the blue in here. See how that gets that much lighter all of a sudden what I put on there that looked so light doesn't seem so light anymore. And I also have to think, well, gee, there's no... It's not like I added any kind of white to it or anything, so it can get, obviously, far lighter than that. Here, we'll go back to it. Yeah, I didn't mean to uh, abandon the intestines so so quickly there, but I thought, you know, you wanted to see more than just an hour of me painting those. And what are we doing? We're also staying consistent with that notion of not getting bogged down on one part of the figure. So here I have to figure out, okay, what what do I do in this right here instance? So I've got some some of the same blue gray that I used on the wings. But let's not forget our dark umber here. So I've got that mixed with the dark umber. 
And once again, putting some on here that to me right now looks light, but in no way, shape, or form is that an actual light color. What it is starting to do is, yeah, it's starting to make the rest of this more interesting. Yeah, see, I'm going to hit some of this with the, the greens because remember these? Remember the greens we put on the hand? Let's see what happens when we, yeah, so that's some of the green that was put on the hand. So I'm, I'm doing my filbert thing again. Using my hands to blend things. So see now, that's all I had before I started. See, now there's a little more, there's a transition in, in this. See that? Here, we'll go with this. I think we had, yeah, I'm going to do this. This is about what we had. And now, again, I can just tap away at it. Or what do I do? I water it down maybe a little bit. So this is why I like to work with these larger craft brushes. I know it seems crazy, counterproductive. There's a million, I'm sure you guys have been saying a, a million things as you're watching this, but there really is, there is a method behind the madness. What does it do? It lets me yeah, move around this much more rapidly. It lets me blend things together. Yeah, you can see how cool that's been. Being able to do something like that. So let's not forget our other arm here. Now when you're putting these together, I think maybe the newer ones, yeah, yeah, the, the newer ones have a little more in the way of instructions that when there's like a multiple arm piece. There's a little more instruction on how to put that together. Some of the older ones, there's a little less of that. And sometimes there's some guesswork involved. Now you can look at the pictures and study those, but because there's options, sometimes it means that you go, oh, okay, which arm is supposed to go where? Or which piece of this arm goes where? So yeah, that's it's something you'll want to think about Some some of the combinations are a little easier to paint than others. You know, some might have, for lack of a better term, the parts sort of interlace a little bit. Kind of like so the way the intestines do on this. So that's something to think about. Again, we're going we're going filbert here, so that we can. And pick away here at the edge of the. I'm calling it a collar. It's really not a collar. It's probably more carapace than collar, but hey, that's what I'm going with. And this jade color here, it's a really nifty. It's a nifty little color that just stands out so nicely, and you can mix it with. Say some of the yellows, can mix it with some of the reds to get get more of a grayish brown. See where now we're lightening up some of that on the top here, so we're starting to get again more transitions. That's what we're after. More transitions, and now what happens if we add just a touch of white to that jade? Here, let's get some blue in there too. And lo and behold, that gets lighter.
and now it's starting to really jump out away from all of our mushrooms that is why way back in the beginning of all this that's why we went with a more of a faded color on the mushrooms because we didn't want those getting in the way visually competing with the, the figure itself I don't want that now see how that's changed a little bit we got the, the turquoise transitions in there here let's hit the inside of this collar and guess what remember the directional strokes that we used on the wings well we're certainly going to do a similar thing here going to work along here now what I'm going to do is end this segment here because I again I try to keep them a certain length I might try and off camera hit some of the things that you just won't be able to see because they're just again they're literally somewhere that well the brush I can get the brush there but I have to turn the miniature in such a way you'll never ever see what I just did so that's not terribly helpful and then I'll start this up again as we add more layers of light and then we try and find some areas you know, do I try and put say some of those orange yeah so I'm gonna try and put some orange on the carapace here oh yeah I'm looking at this thinking I want some teal here so yeah I'm just gonna do that over the top I'm gonna do that here too So I think the yeah the last bit of this video here, what's it going to be? It's going to be really developing more of the more of the main body here, and trying to get some orange incorporated. See, I like that I'm using that as a filbert just. Let's me drag this over the top, and now I'm starting to see all these little bumps that are here that I didn't know were there. So I'm just dragging the brush over it. It's not a dry brush. There's a ton of paint here. There's all kinds of paint on that brush. See how we're starting to yeah, just get multiple layers of color on this. So when you look at something, you say, oh, there's something underneath that. And if you're going to do a figure that's as elaborate as this, and you know, it's not the the price point on these figures is really really good, but hey, you still spend a decent amount on it. So you might want to get just the most out of it that you can. So what we will do then is we'll move on to adding some more lights finding some more areas where we can incorporate that nifty orange color and then maybe go back to stuff like the intestines again so see we're just adding a few lighter touches here but now that was I was getting all the same colors I added some of that yellow to it now Now these new ones that I put, they're just the same level of lightness, but we've changed the hue a bit there. See, so that not all of those are the same. That little bit, I mean, how hard was it to add that? It's just one little bit of sort of unique color to that. It it didn't didn't break anybody's back. It was not that hard. not that hard whoops okay and that happens look at that it's horrible oh my goodness not so much water
A little more water. It's already wiped away. And then a sponge. I used to do this actually on purpose in every video. All better. So what happened there was my brush got hooked on the camera mount. That's that's the tight quarters that we're dealing with here. I see I got a little more my water down there. That's gone. They add a little touch of this green here. A little more. And just a few more touches here. And like I said, we are going to see where we can incorporate some orange. So we got some here. So I'm going to try and maybe get it here on these arms here. Maybe even a little bit on some parts of what we'll call the skin tone. Right? So we'll be back with that. And just a flash. So I promised you orange. Let's find a place for orange. While thinking about what do we have here. Yeah, I could maybe do... See how we got these straight markings here? That's kind of an interesting thing. I could maybe even go here, but let's let's see if we can work in some of this orange into a few spots. Now, basically, I'm going to use instead of the red because I don't want this to be quite so pronounced. I think you can see I used a little bit of the purple in there. So this is a little less orangey. There's that word again. Let's see how that starts to make this a little more interesting, a little less, starting to look a little dead. Not going to get rid of the green entirely there. Still want that around. So see, we've basically added another, another little level of color there. And this is where we see, can we, can we get some orange in here? Also, I did like the idea of these. Having a little bit of darkness to them. You can see I'm sort of stippling the brush on here. Why am I doing that? Because there's an awful lot of little bumps and lumps on this. Because again, it's more of a carapace than some kind of smooth piece of armor. So that's starting to contrast a bit with everything else here. See, I might even throw a few of those dots here. This is something that I like to do sometimes. Just throw out some of those oh, orange dots onto the green and then some green dots onto the orange. See if I can incorporate a little bit of that here. So then in some ways the weapons, you start to think of them as, well, are they part of the figure then? You start to... Think of them as instead of just okay, it's some kind of metal. Maybe it's different. Maybe it's different than that. Maybe it's some other material. It's like a claw or or, or something like that that's been fashioned into one of those weapons. Instead of just again some piece of metal. You can see I'm leaving as much of what was underneath there, that original green. That's still there. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to put those markings there because I want to get some of those green spots in there. And if I do the orange stripes there, that's not going to work out so well. I'm going to see what I can do here. 
Again, I'm just trying to move some things around out of my way. So you have to sometimes bear with me on that. Now let's get a little bit of that up here towards the waist. Make sure a little bit of that works its way down here, too. Yeah, because it was, it was nice having the, the brown and the green working the way it did on the wings, but now it's neat having this. And it's not quite the same bold orange. I wanted to add that in a little more slowly. So see what we're going to do is we're going to work this in here. This is, might also be a good place for some of that orange and also not to hit the figure. So what are we going to do? Same thing we did last time here. Just get in there, wipe some of it away. Again, you're seeing now why I just I have so little space to operate here. The brush literally just got hooked on the camera mount and pushed it right where I didn't want it to go. Yeah, like this. Okay. I hope you can see this. This is where we're going to incorporate some of that orange. Yeah. Right there. And then a little here too. Yeah, that is definitely, that's what I want to see. So where's my red? I'll throw a touch of that out there. You can still see the spot where the red was last time, just that much. And that's already going to change that a whole lot. It's going to really brighten that up. And then when it hits here, you'll really see. See what that's starting to do? It's starting to play off of the green. So you can see I was able to work in some of the orange, but look at how dark it is compared to what's already there. So it seems so light in some places. It's really not that light. The reason why it is looking a little bit on the lighter side, we just built up so much dark. I think maybe now that you can start to see why Sort of work from the middle out to the dark and then back to the lighter colors again. So let's get onto this side of the little carapace here. And who knows? Yeah, you know, let's say you don't like this. How hard is it to just glaze back over the top? I mean, you've seen how we've easily been able to fix crazy little disasters where the brush gets hung up in the camera mount and does horrible things. And we're doing the same thing over here now. And what's it starting to do here? Well... I guess by default we might even end up with almost sort of a verdigris look here as I'm doing this. I can almost see that when you look at it, you say, well, is that, is that a verdigris look that I, I see there? Why? Because we've got the green underneath it. And let's keep going with some of our orange here.
So again, it's really tough for me to hang on to this. Now this is where I want some more of my orange Y because that's also going to contrast with that purple that's there. Again, I'm trying to make sure I don't hit that stupid camera mount again. All right, so now I feel a little bit better about what we've got here. Oh, so I see there was another accident there. So let's see. Can we wipe it off? Yeah, we can get most of that off of there. Catch it soon enough. And get rid of it like that. But it also reminds me here, let's get some of the jade and black. Speaking of darks. I want this to be a bit darker here. And all I'm doing is just adding some water to it just to make it flow. A little more down into some crevices there. See how we added all that white or lighter color to it? I just wanted to darken, darken that part of the transition down. We're going to do the same thing over here on these. And I'm still, again, this is a new, it's a new paint to me, so I'm still getting used to okay just how much water can it can you put in with this stuff right how much does it take to get it to flow the way I want it to so yeah we're gonna add a little more yeah we got the mahogany over here There's some of that original brown. That just needed to also be darker in there. And I actually want these this horn to be darker, not lighter. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use this brush here, if anything else, the handle is shorter. So maybe I'll have less things bashing up against the camera mount. We've got some brighter orange now. Yeah, that's that's a little bit easier to handle. So to speak. Pun definitely not intended. We're going to get into our light umber and yellow ochre. So I think you can see how we've been pretty successful incorporating some of that orange into places. There will probably be more. In fact, I'm sure there'll be more. Here, let's I'm gonna add just a touch of yellow into that so it doesn't get too cold. And all the while, just thinking about these different transitions that I have to make here. They're larger areas. Here, get some of the brown in there even a little more see just how light do I want that to get
And if that's how late it's going to get, then we need to start transitioning away. So I'm going to get a little of that orange in there. Here we go. See that just that darkens it down a bit and helps us with the transition down to where the knee is. Sometimes, yeah, even this one, I'll just kind of break it out into its own little tiny filbert brush. So this is, like I said, this is something I do a lot with the oil painting, where I'm just pushing the paint around with my fingers. Yeah, it's, that looks a little more dramatic. Now do I want, yeah I want that to also have some orange in it. So I'm going to go back to our orange here. And work right in here. Just work in a few touches of light there so now I got all kinds of nice separation and contrast there haven't forgotten about the interior skeleton things I'm gonna mess with those a little bit here so you get a little bit of lighter color there I think there was some more. Ah, this is it. Back here. All right, so most of that just kind of fell out. As I smashed it with my hand, because again, I do not have the space that I need. That's okay. We'll put some other kind of foliage there. Yeah, look at the difference that makes. Or maybe I'll just glue it back in. I guess what I'm trying to encourage people, I don't know, just be less scared, less worried about things. I've seen people do something like that and they basically then strip the whole miniature. So, well, wait a minute, what was that for? Here, let's get a little bit of that ultramarine back in here. Let's work some of the intestines again. And you see, that'll make a, a difference, too, with once I start to put that in, this, the highlights on the legs will not look quite as bright. So let's get a little more, yeah. It's just so incredibly dark in there. We need to get some more. Of these lights, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, it shows up on camera. And like I said before, if I feel the need to, I can always knock those down. Before I knock those down, we need to see just how much lighter those can go. Because they can definitely be much brighter. Yep.
Yeah, that definitely makes a big difference. So let's incorporate some more of this here. And back here. Now that has more red in it, so I'm not going to mess around with that. Speaking of which, I'm going to take this, some of that pink, and we'll do some more reddish lights right here. So if I were to kill the saturation on this, don't think I'm gonna do that right now. It's it's hard enough to hang on to this and the brush and everything else. But if I could do that, you would find that those two light colors, they're the exact same value of lightness. One's just got a different color temperature to it. So changing the temperature of your highlights and middle tones. I know it seems like more work at first, but when you concentrate and focus on that, you get sort of used to it. And then it becomes almost second nature. It almost seems a little bit more fun and a little bit less like work. You know, something that you have to constantly be thinking about. Let's get some of that over here. So again, if I was just working on this without the camera, everything else, I'd still be using the other brush. But it just was not not practical with the amount of space that I have to work. So see, we just we had a little more. Now you can see why I didn't go full hog into all of these highlights straight away before we started to work on all of these other things. Makes me really glad that I just had the patience, just said, nope, nope, can't keep going, have to stop and then move into these other areas first. And by doing that, now I had a little more context with what I wanted to do here. I'll go back here again. And here's some of the magenta now. Gonna find myself a few lights down here. But remember, for lack of a better term, we have to keep some parts of these intestines on the dirty side. Now that might be a little, I don't know, uh, queasy for, for the folks that are squeamish, but uh, that just, there's no better way for me to put it. All right, now inside here, uh, yep, some of that mahogany is still there, where's that red? I'm going to put some red back out here. Nope, that's the magenta. Eh, I could use some of that too. There's a little red. So, I'm going to take that red with some of the black. I'm basically making sort of a mahogany type color there. And that's going to go down into this area it's just pretty much going to look like dark color on screen believe me there's more going on than just that 
Let's see, we're putting this over the top. And now we're going to take some of it away. And the idea is, see, it sort of settles down over the bone. Color. We can take a little more away. And now that looks more like an opening and less like, well, we've just painted some ribs that they're exposed for some reason, but nothing's happening outside that. We're going to do the sim similar here. All right, I'm just trying to get it where you can see it. So here we're going to drop this on here because there's all kinds of exposed stuff going on here. That's why we did this and all the other stuff first. Okay, and now we can just take some of that away. And now it's not so much easier to get that stuff down in there instead of kind of uh, essentially fighting it all along the way. And what I might even do, so we'll, okay, let's take a little bit of that red. Can you see that? Yeah. And I'm going to get basically some, some of that red into the intestines where they're starting to emerge here. Something tells me that makes sense. So I'm going to turn that in a little bit of a glaze there too. See, so we change that around now. So all the all the while this is going on, I'm familiarizing myself with okay. When I try and glaze this, this happens. You know, I, I know what happens when it's a Reaper clear. or liner paint, or secret weapon paint. I know how all that works. Yeah, I've used that hundreds of times. This I don't know, and I'm trying to get a better handle on this. And part of it is, so see that's trying to make that more like it's opened up through a few things of dark in there so that once again we've really change that around. While I'm at it here, where's that same red here? Touch of that black slash mahogany and get it where you can see it. And I'm going to throw a little bit of that. Oh yeah, that's I needed to do that. So see, it's almost like there's, I don't want to say bloody, but, well, you can see what we're hinting at there. Always have a sponge handy so I can take some away. Actually, what that does is it sort of links up to the orange that's there. Not bad. Yeah, it starts to form a little bit of an anchor there color-wise to the orange, so wasn't a bad idea. Yeah, that makes that a little more, a little bolder, a little more interesting. And sort of uh, creates a little I don't know, consequence for those intestines being hmm, external, we'll call them that. So I'm going to stop here pretty soon, maybe another five, ten minutes or so as I just do some of this and in the last episode, we'll try and cover even more of the detail-oriented stuff. 
Or maybe we would put some markings on things. Some final contrast. We do some things on the base. Again, I've got those, my homemade tufts now that I didn't have actually before I even started this thing. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of that up here. Little touches of that right there. Why? Because I'm putting some right here. Or is that, ah, there's some mahogany there. Do that. Sponge. And remove. I used to say, I think it was add and subtract. It was the phrase I used an awful lot. Seems like you can do that with these paints. We've certainly been doing a lot of the adding and subtracting. So see what I just did right here is a little bit of that same dark burgundy color glazed into there. It creates a little separation between the two but starts to carry down some of that well, where we say it's somewhat bloody. So there's again another type of transition there. This is an even lighter intestine color here which will look that much darker, see that much more of a contrast. But then we, we're going to take that down a touch. Yeah, knock it down a little bit. Because I don't want to lose the entire pattern there. But I did want that glaze over the top. All right, so we will leave it at that for this episode. And so episode three, see we're going to build on this. Put spots here, some more final glazes here. And then work on our base, get that all finished off. See what we want to do with the water effects and you know, see what we want to do with some of the trees here. So thanks for watching this one here. Hopefully this was useful to see how we made all of those changes to our colors here to make these start to mesh a little bit more. I know I got the brightness cranked up a lot. And now we've got more of these nifty little color transitions here, shadow, light to shadow transitions. We have were able to do some glazing down in here to get that looking a little bit different. So again, many different ways to contrast colors. So. You know, if you haven't subscribed, maybe maybe you want to subscribe and see more stuff. And if you're already a patron, I appreciate that. It really does help make all this possible. And hopefully this will just give you some things to think about too. Maybe stuff you have not tried before. So thanks again, and I will catch you on the next episode.